creative thought when making Lightroom masks can produce amazing new ways of editing. And in this video, I'll share the tricks I've developed for creating and using Lightroom masks, specifically designed to enhance subjects. I'm excited to also share a new way of vignetting as well as what I call offset adjustments for subjects versus backgrounds. Here is a before and after example of what I'm about to show you. To demonstrate all the techniques I want to show you in this tutorial, I'm going to use this image. Now I've done no editing to this image yet. It was shot at ISO 5600. So I'm going to run it through the AI denoise quickly using 50% on the amount. Okay, so there's the results after the AI denoise and I want to apply just the basic edits for this tutorial. So I'm actually going to use one of my presets. I'm going to use the new Capture Africa preset pack that I've just released and it's got 20 presets in it. And I think I'm going to use probably number nine. I like this one for this image. It changes the colors nicely. And this preset pack doesn't actually change exposure or white balance. So I'm just going to adjust my exposure, drop down a little bit of that contrast. And because I'm going to apply clarity and dehaze and texture later on using offset adjustments, I'm going to make those zero. All right, so that's a good starting point. That's before and that's after. I just want to make sure my sharpening is off for now and the lens corrections have chromatic aberration checked. And then we can begin with some masking. So the techniques in this video rely heavily on a good subject selection. Now that is easy to do. Click the mask here, click subject, but the trick is to make the subject selection perfect. So you can see in this example, Lightroom has selected part of this background. Now to clean that up, I'm going to use a paintbrush. So I'm going to click this mask here, subtract using brush. And now make sure when you paint away areas of the background, select auto mask. I'll show you what it does without auto mask. If I just click and paint, it's going to get rid of anything I paint on. Now, if I click auto mask, it's going to protect areas that aren't the same as where I initially click. So you can see I'm going to click on the background and it's going to protect a large part of the areas on the edge of the brush that aren't similar to that initial background color that I clicked. So I'm going to speed up this next section of the video. I'm just going to clean up this mask perfectly and we can continue on. Okay, so I've cleaned up the mask there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this mask one as subject mask. Now I'm not actually going to apply anything to the subject mask. That's going to be my mask that I use to create further masks from. So the first adjustments I want to make to this mask is what I call offset adjustments. So what that means is applying effects to the subject and the inverse of that effect to the background. So what I want to do here is duplicate the subject mask because I want to work on this subject. And now I'm going to add clarity and texture to this subject. Now you could add clarity and texture to the whole image using those found in the basic panel, but I don't want to add texture and clarity to the background. I only want to use it on my subject. That's going to help the subject stand out from the background. And then what I can do is I'm going to duplicate this again, but I'm going to select duplicate and invert the mask to select the background. Now what I'm going to do there is just add some negative clarity and some negative texture just to offset that adjustment to make it more apparent on the subject. I'm just going to rename this background and I'm going to rename this just subject. Those are the two masks we're going to work on. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to cool down the background slightly and warm up the subject slightly. That's again, another adjustment that's going to help the subject stand out. So I'm going to select background here. I'm going to cool it down just a little bit. I might give it some magenta. Going back to the subject here, and I'm just going to warm it up slightly. And I think what I'm going to do now is to enhance that subject even more. I'm going to darken the background just a little bit there, and then maybe add a little bit of dehaze as well. It's just going to add some nice haze to the background to make it a bit softer. So the next thing I want to show you is I want to add a vignette to the image. Now I'm not going to use the vignette found in the basic panel because that's going to darken everything in the image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vignette only on the background. Now that's going to avoid darkening any part of the subject 
and only affect that background there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this background. I'm going to make sure just to reset all the settings we applied to that background copy. And I'm going to intersect that background, holding down Alt, with a radial gradient. So I'm going to click and drag a radial gradient on the image, making sure to invert that radial gradient. And anything that's red is going to be darkened. So as you can see, that mask is avoiding the subject completely. So I'll just darken this down too much, just so you can see. Doesn't matter where I put that radial gradient, it's not going to affect the subject at all. So I'm just going to darken that down just a little bit. So that's a before and after. That's a nice way to add a vignette. And then what's really nice about this custom vignette is you actually then have controls to adjust different effects on that vignette. So I can cool down the vignette a little bit. I can raise the blacks to soften it up a little bit there. I can r remove some of the contrast. But I think we're just going to darken it down just a bit. And now another part of vignetting that I do is I like to darken the top and the bottom. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this background again. I'm going to make sure to reset all the sliders on that background copy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to intersect this with a linear gradient. And I'm just going to click and drag from the top. Just basically darkening the top there. And I'm going to duplicate the background again. Reset the settings. And intersect that with another linear gradient for the bottom. Now you can see it's not going to adjust that perch there. It's only going to affect the background. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to add a bit of a light effect from the right hand side. So I'm going to add a radial gradient. I'm going to zoom out a bit here. Just want to make quite a large radial gradient. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know this technique. Just going to add a nice radial gradient there. And I'm just going to raise the blacks, warm it up, and add some negative dehaze. And I think I might add a little bit of saturation. And what you can also do is using this color here, you can actually apply a color to this effect, really emphasizing that light a little bit more there. Something probably around about there. Maybe that's too much saturation. And just drop maybe some of that contrast. And I might darken down this top part of the image just a bit there. Maybe something like that. So I think to finish off, I'm just going to tweak some of the settings. I'm just going to add some nice blue to the shadows. I might darken the shadows down just a touch. I might raise the exposure, getting a little bit bright on those whites there on the bird. So I think I'm going to just adjust that using a luminance range. Select that luminance range. And what I'm going to do is just intersect that with a brush. And I'm just going to paint on the image where I want that effect to be applied. Maybe I'll apply it to this perch as well. And I'm just going to come down to the highlights and the whites just to drop that down just a bit. And then perhaps just work on the color a bit more. I feel like the light is looking pretty good. I'm just going to add a bit of magenta there. And I think I want to maybe darken down the background. So I'm just going to select one of these background masks here and just drop down the exposure very, very slightly. So this is a before and that is an after. Adding depth and shaping light in Lightroom is another significant technique to learn and you can do just that by clicking here and watching this video next.